I'm Raj Shah from the University of Colorado and one of the GIE editorial board members. And joining me today is Dr. Ann Peary from the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, who will be uh, speaking with, uh, with us about uh, their article titled Morbidity and Mortality After Surgery for Non-Malignant Colorectal Polyps. So Ann, thanks so much for joining Thank us you. today. So could you uh, perhaps tell us a little bit about what um, the purpose and intent of the study was? Sure, so um, using national surgical quality improvement program data um, from hundreds of hospitals across the United States, we've estimated the morbidity and mortality after elective surgery for non-malignant non colorectal polyps. And um, what we found is that mortality is relatively rare, it's less than 1%, but morbidity is incredibly common. Um, one in seven patients who has this surgery will have at least one major complication. And we think this is really important. So how, uh, what was the process of sort of identifying the studies and mm -hmm. getting the information? Um, so this is uh, quality improvement data. Um, what we've done is we've identified any patient who had an ICD code and a CPT code um, for colorectal surgery and who had a non-malignant polyp. And so you use this National Surgical Quality Improvement Program? Mm -hmm. What's that? What is that? So it's a quality improvement program that um, now includes over 500 hospitals across the United States. Um, so it's growing every year. It's been in place for at least 30 years. Um, and the great thing about this program is that there are a system of interreliability checks um, to, to ensure the quality of the data. And uh, what were some of the key findings? Um, so we think the key findings are that um, while mortality is relatively rare, less than 1%, it is up to 3% in those over the age of 80. Um, and morbidity is really quite common. So um, at least, like one in seven people will have at least one major complication, like readmission, reoperation, major infection. And so the other thing I found interesting is the ostomy rate. There's right. about 2% that yeah. had either an ileostomy or colostomy immediately or I guess interop interoperatively, immediately postoperatively. Right, right. And so um, I wonder if that, we often don't, when we consent our patients for a colonoscopy and uh, removal of large polyps, for example, I, I think we, we quote the risk of perforation, the potential risk of surgery mm -hmm. as a result of the perforation. But right. it's kind of interesting in your data because you could potentially use some of this information to help inform your patients a little better. Absolutely, we would, um, we would love to see providers and patients use this data to understand their options if they're diagnosed with a non-malignant colorectal polyp um, because we do think the endoscopic pathway um, is completely legitimate and needs to be explored. Was there any um, sense in the studies on looking at um, operator experience, the surgical operator experience? Because when we do interventional endoscopy, mm -hmm. for example, we always criticize those, uh, those studies in which the, everyone is just experts. Right. And if everyone's experts, then is this going to be applicable to the, you know, the average or general gastroenterologist doing those kind of procedures? Uh, did you find any data on the mention of operator or surgical experience? Right. So we, I think the good thing about this study is it's very generalizable to the U.S. population because it represents hundreds of hospitals low volume, high volume centers across the U.S. Um, so we don't know anything about, we didn't look at volume or operator experience, but in a way that's really good because it generalizes to um, most of our patients. And the, just the sheer volume of hospitals and right. surgeons right. involved kind of makes it more applicable to just about every practice, both right. private and academic. Probably. Absolutely, yeah. And then about 75% of the patients had laparoscopic surgery yes. compared to just a quarter with open. Right. And that surprised me a little bit only because I would have thought that the, I thought one of the advantages of the laparoscopic approach would be lower uh, morbidity. Did you find any differences between uh, open and laparoscopic? That's a great point. So those who had an open approach were at increased risk of a major complication. Um, although there are things that we couldn't control for, perhaps 
those who had an open approach had a more complicated abdomen. Um, so I think that that's a harder question to address, um, but it's an important point. And do you find any limitations in your study? Um, certainly, certainly there are limitations to using a quality improvement program. It is possible that those that participate in a quality improvement program have better outcomes because you have a population of people who are trying to improve their outcomes. So it's possible that we've even underestimated the risks associated with, um, with surgery for a non-malignant polyp. That's an excellent point. Um, anything that you would recommend to our readership as far as how this might alter um, discussions with patients or their uh, recommendations on large polyps or maybe even not so large polyps? Right. So we, we hope that patients and physicians will use our data to really consider their options, their options for either surgical management or sort of the endoscopic pathway. Well, thank you very much for joining thank us you. today. Thanks.